Hello again, this is Mildra. I am back and I thought I'd make an improved guide. <laughs> Best tips video. It was sort of hastily compiled out of old footage and new footage in the mix. And also I have figured out a couple of things that I didn't know. But I thought I'd start from the beginning. I think I've played around 30 hours now or so. But if we start from the beginning, this is how your screen will look immediately after login. Once you've created your character and left the game once. If you look carefully, you see two things missing. There is no way to delete your character and there is no way to start a new save. And that means what you do in character creation screen, that is what you're going to live with for a long time. There are things you cannot change. You cannot change your body type, your face, voice, your eye color, your skin tone or your name. Now there were two name spots when you created your character. The first one, the full name, is what will be displayed over your character when you're in game. The other one is what the villagers will call you in dialogue. I chose just Vildra in both slots. They have said that they may implement ways of changing those things you can't change today in game later, but they haven't made any promises or set any dates or whether that will be free of charge or not. I've played a lot of MMOs over the years where you both pay for the game and pay a monthly subscription and changing these features have always been in a cash shop. And if they decided to put those things behind a paywall, I wouldn't mind at all actually because they have bills to pay as well and the game is free which is um, amazing. Let's try to get in. Okay so we're in game and uh, it is several days later because <laughs> I ran into editing hell. But next I'd like to talk about storage because I misspoke about that in the first video. As I said, the storages are interconnected. I have eight storage boxes now, so my total storage space is 3,200. Now there are two recipes for upgrades you can buy. You use the storage boxes you have as crafting material. And you can actually uh, pick up a storage bin and use it to craft and then put it back down again. So uh, there's, there's not an issue. Uh, the first upgrade is for a copper chest and it the recipe will cost you 25,000. You can buy it in the cash register at the furniture shop. The second upgrade is for the iron storage chest. That one costs 100,000 gold. But there is also another chest, a secure storage, because your crafters and your, your stove and oven, they pull materials from your general storage. And if you have special items that you're saving for gifting or if it's a rare fish you want to save or something like that to avoid that being pulled from a crafting station you can put it in a special chest you can buy it for 1000 gold in the furniture store at the cash register and the items you put in that chest will be safe and i'll show you on the stove i have only just begun decorating so never mind how it looks. If you make a recipe, there is on items where you have multiple possible choices in your chest, there will be a little pen here, which means you can edit. Now I only have one mushroom, normal quality, but if I check use high quality, you can see that I also have bright shrooms. And if for instance, my normal quality ordinary mushrooms, I didn't have any, it would try to pull a normal quality bright shroom. And if I'm not very observant when cooking, I might have missed that. Or if you cook a recipe with fish in, you can edit it here, but you can also make sure it doesn't get pulled by getting the special secure storage to avoid having stuff pulled from your storage. The way this safe storage works is that either you can drag into the storage from your inventory or you can by clicking this uh, button you get when you have it you can switch and you can also if i want to pull something from here 
I can pull it into the button and it will switch to this storage and it can hold a hundred items. And that is on top of the, the normal storage space you have in your general storage. And I have another tip for you. When you process materials in your crafters, they can hold three slots. You don't have to put the, the items it, you craft into your storage uh, if you don't want to until the third slot begins to fill then it can't craft anymore and you can also drag items from here into your storage and while it's open you can also drag another item from your bag into the storage in here you only see that um, tab of the storage but you can also pull from there into your bag uh, which might be a handy and another thing about storage when you sell stuff in your bin you can click but you also have access to your entire general storage from there uh, and you can click separate slots you can pull from your storage to your inventory as well so you can drag things between all these i had to take a break and harvest and water my garden plots well the next thing i'd like to talk about is the menus this first tab in the menus you can reach by three using three hotkeys either c or i or p and this is your character and your skill money and inventory tab all in one. We'll start here. This is the tool wheel that you use by pressing R. You can you can switch these uh, tools around any way you want, but the tool that is placed in the middle is the one that will be equipped if you just tap R without bringing out the wheel. And you can also unequip a tool by pressing X. This is tapping R this is pressing X. Under the tools, you see your skills. There are eight skills. They each have a color and they each have a circle where you see your progress towards the next level. You see what level it is. And if you hover over them, you see which NPC it is that you progress your skill leveling with. Each level you gain, you'll get a mail from this NPC telling you come see me, I've got some new recipes in my store for you. And the first 10 levels, you will basically unlock all the t recipes for tools and processed materials and whatnots that you can get. So 10 levels is the basic mastery. I'm not sure that there is any level cap at all, but there are accomplishments for leveling up to level 50. But I think you can progress even after that. This is your character overall level. It is sort of a combo of all your skill leveling and and your friendship leveling and everything. I don't think there is a cap to that level either. And on the other hand, I don't think it matters. On this side, you have your money, your renown and your in-game currency for you use in the premium store. I whaled a bit in the different alphas and uh, I got my in-game currency back when beta started and I haven't replaced all the, the outfits I had in alpha. The accessories from right to left. This is your glider. It is auto-equipped once you finish that quest. You can, uh, you can attach a fishing bobber or a fishing attachment. I haven't come very far in fishing. I'm only four. So I don't really know what that is or what it does. Then you have two slots for romance pins. And uh, as far as I understand, it means you can sort of be actively romancing at least two characters. Uh, at some point, they will make it official and give you their pin, which you can equip here. I think it will show on your clothing as well. I am going to romance all characters, so I think there are too few slots for that. But I don't know, maybe they give you two different pins for two different levels of romance. I do not know. Anywho, this is your inventory. I have only unlocked the first backpack expansion. It costs 500 gold. You can buy it in Seki's store. It's on a separate counter. Uh, the second one costs 5,000 and the third one costs 50,000. If you, for instance, have had friends uh, using your referral code, you will find your rewards here. I have already cashed in mine. 
this is the emotes. It's the same principle. It's a it's a wheel, just as for the tools. This one you activate by T. By default, the wave emote is in the center, and it works the same as the tool wheel. If you tap T, your character will wave. That was the T. And the last button is the premium store. You can access the store from your menus. You can access it from Gel's store, the cash register. You can access it from the changing rooms in his store. And you can access it from a wardrobe in your own house or on your own lot. You can't change outfits here. And you can't change outfits in the cash register. And if you're brand new to the game and you don't have a wardrobe yet, you can change outfits in gel store in the changing room. But you can see, you can try out the outfits here, but you can't change outfits. I think that's it for this, this first tab. For the second tab, I will move outside because I have no map when I'm on my lot. Okay, so I moved outside my home lot. This is the map of Kilima. You can scroll with the mouse wheel or pressing the buttons here. As you see on the map, you can see all the villagers. Until you've met them for the first time, it would just be an empty silhouette in them. But once you've met them, you see you can see exactly where everyone is. Is If there is someone you don't see on the map, odds are that they are in Bahari Bay, which is the next region. Or Gina, I saw, just went into the caves here. So she's invisible as well. But if you want to track a certain villager, you can click with the scroll wheel button and it will track this this villager there is no minimap but there is a compass at the top of the screen and you see Hassian now has a white circle around him and if he were to move walk walk around you would be able to follow him on the compass around the map you see little horseshoe signs I'm standing on this one this is the central stables the other ones are places where you can fast travel and teleports are available through these boards. As you see here, these cost money. I can go home to my home lot for 10 gold. I can go to Bahari Central Stables for 25. And these are the different places in Kilima that I can go to. There is a board like this at each teleport stop. And at the Bahari Central Stables, you instead can teleport to this board, to the to the Kilima Central Stables and the list below are the places in Bahari you can teleport to. Now if like me you like to go to Bahari straight away when you log in you don't have any money then you can go by foot which I mentioned in my first video. This is the gate to Bahari. The next tab is the quest list. For many many hours I bet at least 10 I had only this one find your ship and to ask someone to be my ship they have to be level 4 friendship so I'm not even close. In the beginning you are drowning in quests. There are introductions to villagers, there are introductions to basic mechanics in the game, there are tutorials for all the skills, sometimes you get a quest when you level up a skill but this will die down pretty soon and what you, what you are left with are the friendship quests. All, all your friends will give you a quest when you level up to two, three and four. I am chasing the, those now. I have done quite a few. I'm aiming for getting everyone to level two now, first of all, because the first level up quest to level two gives you 20 renown. <laughs> and I have one tile left to buy on my lot and uh, my writs now cost 100 gold. They increase steadily in price until they reached 100 and they have stayed at 100. I am currently at 46, so 54 more renown and then I'm done with upgrading the whole lot size. Then I will start putting points into, into my focus. As you can see, this is your focus bar. I, I have a 250 length and I'm still at 25%. So I haven't put any money into that because I think it's so easy to level your skills to 10. It's later you, you need the buff more than ever. But that is a priority. If your focus is to level a skill fast, by all means buy a focus extensions. But 
do the Phoenix one first. The, uh, the only difference if, with this is that you can eat bigger meals, but I don't mind. I, I'm, I mostly eat ramen that I cook myself. It gives 125. So when my bar is empty, I eat two ramen and I'm full. It's not a timed buff, uh, which I thought before. The points here is the points that will be added to your experience point when you loot. That is important to know. I'm going back and forth here. I'm sorry. But if you mine, or no matter what skill you're doing, except possibly fishing, because that is difficult to do things in the middle of, but regardless of what you're doing in the others, you do not get the experience until you pick up the loot. If you, you can shoot 15 Cernuks and then suddenly realize, dang, I don't have any focus. Well, no matter, you just eat and then you pick up your loot. Or the same with mining or cutting down trees or crafting. You don't get the XP for crafting until you pick up the item from the crafting table. You don't get XP for cooking until you pick up the dish from the stove. You don't get XP for anything when it comes to gardening except harvesting. You get nothing from watering and weeding and tilling. And the bugs you do not get XP until you pick up the bug. If you find, if you cast out your your line and realize you have no food, well, you can pick it back up before you get a bite. But if you got a fish hooked, then I'm afraid you're you're screwed. But I was uh, I was here. So in this game, what will drive the story and make you progress in in deepening your connection to the whole world is the friendships with the villagers. They will give you useful information. If you give them gifts they like, they will send you gifts back. They will give you quests every time you level up. It's extremely important. The, it is a total focus in this game to talk to the villagers. I talk to the villagers every in-game day and I give them as often as I can. I cannot stress this enough. Villagers are extremely important. It's never a waste of time to talk to a villager. Also, they will give you renown, sometimes just for talking to them. Only a few points, but it adds up. And sometimes if you give them an, an item they like or love, they will give you renown. So they're a very good source for getting renown. The next tab is the community tab. It's, it's the guild tab. In this game, the guilds are called neighborhoods. And here you can create your, your own neighborhood. I already made mine, so I can't show you the initial tab, but it's very self-explanatory. You can invite people and you can search players if you know, you need to know their full name, but it don't, you don't need to be on the same server instance as them, or I don't think you even have to be online at the same time. As long as you know the full name, you can invite the player who then can accept in the in the social tab, which is hotkey O. There will be special activities for neighborhoods later on, but as of now, we do not know exactly what they will be. This is the friendship tab, and there is so much information in this tab. It's amazing. I'm not sure all features work. This yellow speech bubble it means this is someone with a guild store and I have leveled up that skill. The blue means you can have, you can talk to these people. That I haven't found working always, uh, but I think that is how it's intended to show you which characters haven't you talked to today. Further on, some have one bar and some have two. The people with one bar, that is the friendship bar. They are not romanceable. The ones with two bars, they also have a romance bar. But this you cannot unlock until you have friendship level three. The only one I have friendship level three with is Gina. You don't automatically start gaining experience on your romance bar. To do that, you have to show your intentions. You have to give an item that shows your intent. There are two items you can gift. The easy one is a box of chocolates that you buy at the general store from Seki for 200 gold. If you give that to a character who is not romanceable, they will refuse to accept it. Some might be a uh, insulted. <laughs> Some might uh, uh, nicely decline. The same is if you try giving it to someone that you don't have level three friendship with, 
they will not accept it. But if they're level three friendship, they will accept it. I will uh, romance everyone that is romanceable and see how that goes. I don't think there are any limitations. I have romanced everyone in Alpha and that was uh, perfectly uh, possible. If you get their pin, they might be offended if you show up in front of them, start talking to them wearing someone else's romance pin. But yeah, uh, uh, I'm planning on breaking a few hearts, but uh, first I'm gonna win them. That is my plan for science, of course, always for science. If you have a new quest, like a friendship quest, you will see a big yellow exclamation point on the character. But there is so much more here. Here you can see the reward for each friendship level up quest. Everyone will give you a key for level three and everyone will give you 20 renown for the level two quest. The level four quest seems to be mostly items. And also, if you romance people, they will have quests for leveling up the romance. I am very curious of getting all, all the quests. Above this, uh, you see a little about your status for friendship and romance. When you, when you talk to, uh, Oh, look, there's a breakup function. I didn't know that. I've been worried about this since I'm going to romance all of them. Gosh, I'm so grateful. Okay, but you're still on, Gina. No worries. <laughs> Sorry. When you talk to uh, villagers, you have little boxes at the side of the dialogue window. Well, you, you have two or three. If you have three, the top one is the guild store. The middle one is a gift, if you want to give something to them. And then there's one beneath that is sort of a gift and a question mark on top. It's not always active, but if it is active, press it. Because then they will tell you either what they want that week or what someone close to them in family or friends wants that week. Until your level three, you will only see the possible possible two liked items. When you hit level three, you can also get information about their loved items. This information, when you ask, when you press that button and get information on what they want this week, it will be recorded here. And this is a huge help. So you can use this tab to stock your backpack before you go do your daily rounds to talk to villagers. And if you have given a liked or loved item, it will be ticked. So I have given G Gina Flint this week and chocolates, but I still can give her a heat root. And if I manage to catch a mutated angler, which I don't think I will with my uh, bad equipment and low level, but if I do, I can give her this and it will give me double thumbs up. So there's so much info to gather here. And what I'm doing now is I am pushing everyone to level up. Uh, I find that very interesting. But my biggest grief here is that Hodari is not romanceable, the most attractive person in the entire game. But that is as it is. And the last tab, by the way, the short key for this is L and the short key for quests is J, if I didn't say that. The accomplishment is short key U. This, this is all the sort of in-game achievements you can complete and get rewarded with renowned for and you are drowned in this in the beginning because the start the initial level on all these is very simple well maybe not for for the skills because the lowest level is level to 10 the next one is level to 25 and the last one level to 50 and you only get 60 renowned for leveling to 50 in a skill which i think is not much which, by the way, if like me, you want to expand your land, if you level to 50, you get 15 plus 30 plus 60. That is just barely enough for one tile when you reach the max price for a uh, writ, which is 100 renown. But I only have one left and then I will start pushing Phoenix Shrine. But there are loads of, of uh, different accomplishments here that will award you renown. So I strongly advise you study this to see, is there something I am really close to? I managed to finish this the other day with low skill and shitty equipment. I managed to solo the proud horn, Cernuk in Bahari Bay. I'm very proud of this, by the way. But that is what you can find in your menus, which is quite a lot, actually. And you also have 
some information on your screen. You have, for instance, you can see I have mail, which means I should go home and look in my mailbox. And also you can, you can pin up to three quests on your screen. Now I only have two, but if I unpin them, they will disappear if I don't want to clog up my, my screen. And you also see the last skill you used and your hotbar, which you can scroll between with the, the mouse wheel. I think that covers most things. Oh, what time is it? 9.30 p.m. Well, I was going to look at the stores, but let's start with the, the cash registers. Let's start here at City Hall. The cash registers seem to be open 24 seven. In this one, it doesn't unlock until you finish building your first uh, main house. Then you can buy the Ritz here to expand your lot. You can buy crafting licenses that will allow you to place one more crafter on your lot. Initially, you can only place five. I have bought a couple and the price goes up with every every license you buy. So mine, I think I have bought three. So my next one is 1500. The first one was 500. The second was 750. The third was 1250. No, the third, maybe the third was a thousand and the fourth. 1250. Well, it's it's been going up anyway every with every purchase. You can also buy rooms to add to your house. It's just the same as with the house. What you buy is a blueprint. You then have to contribute stone and wood and it takes 8 hours real lifetime before they're built. Fireplace best thing I've ever bought was a set. Mine cost 4,000. So those also go up in price the more you buy, but, uh, and it had to be built with, I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was ceramics. I, I don't know. You'll see if you buy it. The gazebo, it says, requires accomplishment housing slots too. So I guess that means I have to do another another plot before I can buy it at all, which made me sad. Windmill, I had that one too. It's the same. You have to build it with materials and it takes uh, many hours. Harvest house, it's the same as your starter house, but this is for your second lot. I'm not sure I showed that. I will show that. But these are things you can buy here in the city hall. Can we go home and look at the housing thing? because I feel it's uh, related now. I'm going to use this return button. Did I say that? This return button is, it immediately teleports you to your home lot. It has a 30 minute cooldown. So I like to save it for when I go to Bahari so I can go home quickly when my bag is full. But now I'm going to use it here. Okay, dokie. So age, this is your lot, one left. Um, you can edit your house and your rooms if you press this pen, this is the front wall. It has two windows. If you press one, you can choose. Do you want a double window, a solid wall, or a small, simple window? I have chosen the double. You have the same on the side wall. Not here because uh, I have a fireplace there that requires a solid wall. This is a doorway to the next room. You can choose by a totally open one, a small opening, a doorway, there's no door in it though, I think. Let's try it. And then there's a, this this kind of shape of door. And of course, you also can change the windows on your rooms. Let's see if there's a door. I don't think there is. I think there's just an opening. Yeah. Well, I don't want that. I want... It's uh, wrong one. Wrong one. I want this opening. This one. I like it. I just uh, had it built, so I haven't uh, uh, put any stuff in yet, almost. And I haven't started furniture crafting yet. I'm focusing on gardening for now. And one other thing about uh, storing, by the way, you can place bugs and fish. You just put them on your bar and place them like any other item and the aquarium will be created automatically. Some small fish have a round one. 
Some bugs have a narrow tall one and some don't. But uh, it's automatic. And if you remove, pick up and remove one, it will be just a normal fish again. And this is my pride and joy, my proud horn Uh But there was another thing I was going to show you. I don't have to move. I don't know why I do it, but I did. So back to age. This is your lot. Up here, first of all, you can set permissions. If you will allow friends and neighbors and party members to visit anytime you're home, you can tick that. If you don't want any other players to access your lot at all, you can close it. Then you will only be visited by NPCs in connection to quests and whatnot. But if you go here, you have default slot, new slot and new plot. I wonder what a new plot is, if, if it's totally new. But if you, if you go to new slot, and load it. Oops. All your stuff disappeared. Only the selling bin is left. Now you can build a second house. That is what the harvest house in the city hall shop is for. Because if you, let's say, this, I think this came up in, uh, if you want a, a totally new plot, you have to buy it. But in Alpha, uh, there were a lot of people who bought huge houses used all the nice furniture and then they unlocked a new craft, crafted furnishing set and thought, dang, that looks good. I want that, but I don't want to get rid of any of the stuff I've got because I love that too. So then this was created, the possibility of having multiple instances of your own instanced lot. Uh, so we can build a totally new house, make it a totally different shape and put totally different furnishings in it. Apparently you have to do that, make a new slot and place a house on it and build it before you're allowed to buy the gazebo. And that almost made me cry. That's how it is. Another thing on the fly, if you press K, you access the camera. If you press this button, you turn around to make it a selfie. You can scroll in and out, zoom in and out. And you can pan, holding down the right mouse button. If you press the left mouse button, you take a photo. It will be stored here in recent. If you don't save to album, it will be deleted when you leave the game. And if you want to look at your album, you can press that button and you can see what pictures you've saved from before. I, and you can delete and whatnot. And that was just incidental because I just remembered. But let's go to the next store. Let's rotate this way. Next, the next building is the library. It doesn't have a store. Then you have the furniture store. All the items on display and on sale here are items you will be able to craft. Uh, if you don't want to craft, you can buy them here. They're pretty pricey. But this is the furniture store shop. It is always open, it seems. Here you can buy certain materials that are processed, like leather, fabric and silk. You can purchase furniture modification kits. Uh, there is a crafting station for changing colors of uh, furni some furnishings. Some furnishings, I think you can add customizations, like if you want to attach a book to a bookshelf or something like that. There is also a bunch of wallpaper and flooring you can buy from here, loads. And at the very bottom is the storage chests. Let's see if we get there. And it's recipes you buy. You have to craft this stuff. This is the lockbox storage bin. The special chest for secure item storage that your crafters will not pull from. It holds 100 items. And then there's the copper storage. They each hold 825. So that times 8. Uh, you figure the math. And the last one is the iron one. 
which holds 1250, which adds up to 10,000 storage slots if you have eight chests. This one is 25k and this one is 100k. But if you don't want to uh, craft leather, fabric and silk, they are made in a loom and that is a crafting machine you will unlock by leveling furniture crafting. But all these items can be crafted. This is the general store. This is where you buy the backpack upgrades. This is the lucky coin machine. If if you buy for a certain amount in the general store, Seki will send you a lucky coin. You can use it in this machine and it's like a lottery machine. You might get some goodies in the bowl. The trick is when you open it, the menu is broken. So you right click it like when you open an oyster but the first option, which, which is open, is invisible. So don't throw it away or anything like that. Click the empty slot in the menu. This is Seki's store. Here you can buy the, the, the lowest level arrows and smoke bombs, the chocolates for initiating romance, bait, worms. You can buy seeds, not the juicy stuff though. You have to be level 10 gardening and buy that from Badru. You can buy cooking ingredients that you can't grow yourself, but you can gather. Garlic, mountain moral, spice sprouts. You can buy fertilizer. This can also be crafted in with a worm bin that you unlock from Aina in his skill store. Flour, butter, eggs, cooking oil, vinegar, milk, salt. Those are items you can only get here. Sundrop Lily and Crystal Lake Locus are flowers you can pick in Kilima, but you can also buy them here. But these are plentiful, so I, I don't understand why anyone would buy them here. Unless it was a loved or wanted gift from an NPC and they couldn't be bothered to run and get them. And you can buy meat from Cernuk and Chapa and fur and hide from Cernuk and Chapa if you don't want to hunt. You cannot buy the antlers though. Seki has a secret black market store. If you befriend him enough to be given a key, you can access it through this secret doorway in the bookcase. Here is also a store, but that this one is only open when Seki is here, which is at night, but he's just left for home now. I think he closes at 3 a.m. and opens at 10 or 11 p.m. In this store, he sells the lucky coins that you will get for free if you buy something from his uh, upstairs store. They cost 10k here. He also sells three really funky and I think sort of animated wallpapers that are expensive. And he sells um, fireworks arrows. He also has items on display here. He has a row, three or four rugs, four I think rugs here. At this edge there's something special. It's usually either a bathtub belonging to one of the furnishing uh, sets but you cannot craft them. You can only buy them here and they cost 10, 12, 14 K. There is also an outhouse. There are toilets sometimes and sinks. Bath bathroom stuff basically. He also has a really cool in, in his house he has a really cool arcade machine arcade game a uh, classic uh, arcade game machine that you can buy for 60,000 but these in here there is a rotating stock and there's only one item so if another player beats you to it it will be gone then there's usually a couple of paintings uh, for, for 4 to 20k and there's usually some other wall decoration it could be a tapestry or something if you haven't gotten the key so you can exit and enter from the general store this is the way you come in because there is a second entrance and this you can you can enter from here from day one this is the sea the sewers and this on the map is right between the two docks or oh, oh. Aina's dock and this dock so you can get in here and once you get the key from him uh, 
especially if you buy something from him, he will be very grateful. And also he wants you to keep quiet about what you've seen because maybe it isn't totally tax free and legal as he treats it. But then you will get, when you go here, you get pull the loose book and then you enter, which is pretty nifty. And you just run through that blue hologram thingy. The next shop is Jell's uh, boutique. Uh, he he frequently asks what you think about his uh, collection on display. And these, I have never seen any clothes on any of those mannequins but he has the cash register which is the premium store just the same as in your tab and these are the changing rooms which works exactly like your wardrobe you can change your hair your hair color eyebrow color and dye patterns in your hair hats tops bottoms makeup and if you have a glider skin uh, that you may have gotten from as a reward for having friends using your referral code, you'll find it here too. You cannot use this glider until you finish the quest and actually got the glider. This is just a skin. And you can access the store here too. So all roads lead to the premium store. Next is the inn which is the first place you uh, are directed to. Here is Reth's, the cooking store. Here you can buy re f finished meals, cooked meals. The first one is 100 focus points, and this one is 350 focus points. I will not buy this because I can't fit that yet. I only have 250, so those two are the only ones I'm interested in, but I don't buy those either because I cook my own food. This cash register is is a dud. It doesn't have anything in it. Uh, this is Sifu's place. At this anvil, you can repair your tools. And I've shown that in the previous video as well. This is the only place where you can repair for gold. I refuse to make repair kits. Call me stubborn, but that's how it is. She also has a store here where she sells processed stuff, hardwood and sapwood planks, uh, copper and iron bar, ceramic and stone brick, glass pane and glass bulbs, and also an extra work table. You can't craft that, but you might need one if you make a second slot on your housing plot. So those are stores. I don't think Ina has one. Uh, now I have to check. Well, here we are at Ina's dock. He doesn't have a cash register store, but he he is, uh, if you, we follow the skills here, he is the first one. He has a guild store. You can access it directly by pressing G or you can access it from the chat window when you're in dialogue with him. This is the guild store the gifting and this is learn what the villager wants this week which is not active here but i will go to the guild store here you will get access to recipes crafting stations recipes for crafting stations tools and whatnot each time you, you level up i am only level four so i can't access these things you will unlock these things paying with the gold until you reach level 10 after when you reach level 10 you will start earning crafting badges or skill badges skill medals i don't know what they're called skill medals that you can use to purchase items uh, because uh, i mean there's an achievement for reaching level 50 so what do you do after 10 when you've got all the tools and crafting stations and recipes you're gonna unlock well then you can buy stuff glowworm is a a better bait speed booster size booster rod recovery booster hook time booster oh that's good and then there are bobbers i think these are cosmetics to be honest tuning fork that is sort of a buff that uh, um, allows you to track i think all skills have some version of this fishes a cool plaque for your wall 
a, an awesome looking wallpaper. I'm really, I'm really keen on that one. A bubble with a festive lantern, which glows in the dark. How lovely is that? An awesome chest. I guess this is a customizable furnishing. And this aquarium, look at this. 980 medals. I'm not sure I will get that this year, but I will certainly do my darndest. Hi, Aina. Oh, I can tell you have been fishing. I can sense it on you. It is our common oneness, after all. Aina, I like you. Yes, I will. Next on the list is Breath. Let's see if Breath is awake. Oh, here he comes. Let's look at his skill store. He is... Uh, in charge of cooking. So these things I have already gotten. Incidentally, for cooking, there is at least one recipe that requires having two stoves. And I think there's another that requires having two prep stations. So uh, you might have to expand your kitchen eventually. But it's the same here. Up to level 10, you will unlock recipes. After that, you will earn skill medals. Buying items. These are ready cooked meals you can buy. Cool thing for the wall. Ramen bowl wallpaper. Cook's trays. This looks like an awesome display thing. It's, it says customization. It means you can use it. You can use the customization station and either change colors or add items or whatever. And this Cook's market stand. If you can't stand standing around, you could always open a street food store with this market stand. It looks awesome. I wonder if it works, if you can actually sell cooked meat. I doubt it, but it looks awesome. That was Reth. He already left, but the menu stayed. Next up is, is Badru. Oh, I forgot Badru's shop. He sells vegetables, crops. All the crops you can grow on your, in your, on your garden plots. He sells here. Pretty steep prices, I'd say. 180 for one cotton, 120 for an onion. But, uh, but he also has a guild store. The soil, you can buy as soon as you have the money. It's not gated behind levels, but there is a limit. You can only have nine, so I can't buy anymore. I have skipped a few recipes because I wanted to use my money for something else. And it's the same here. Up to when you hit level 10, you start earning the badges. And this is this is the price, the blueberry bush seed and the apple tree seed, which you buy with medals. And you better be stocked up with seed makers so you can make your own seeds after this or it will be tiresome. You can buy special fertilizer. You can also make this in a glowworm farm bin that you get from Aina. A cool wall decoration. Tomato vines wallpaper, if you want the outdoors feel indoors. This well is awesome. Gardener's cornucopia is like a gigantic uh, display of fruit. And this gardener's grow house, this looks totally awesome. I think I will want 10. Okay, next up is Ashura. Oh, he's on his way back from fishing. You really made, really made our valley proud, Vildra. I see you've really worked to become a pillar of our community. And speaking of pillars, if you ever need to cut something really tough down, I think I have just the recipe. Okay, so I just in unlocked this puppy. 3,000. Okay, I need to cut down more of these then. But anyway, once I hit level 10, I will start earning skill medals for foraging and then I can buy planks the, the flow infused planks I can buy the heart drop lily which is what you use to start romance if you don't buy chocolates at Zeki's you can also give that uh, uh, repeatedly to increase the romance the rare forage items from Bahari Bay dowsing rod it's the same as uh, Aina had for tracking in this case forageables and rare forageables a nice plaque for your wall a mushroom woods wallpaper the Kilima Koi Pond this is an absolute must 1120 and the forager's planter looks awesome and the forager's bonsai I will absolutely have to have all these items let's see is Hodari on the map he lives in Bahari Bay and Sometimes he comes here for lunch, but this seems to not be such a day. Or maybe it's not lunchtime. 
but I will skip him for now and go to Bahari later. Oh, look, Hodari, here we come. He lives right by the gate, so he al always walks in here. Sometimes if um, someone with the guild shop or someone you have an active quest with is asleep, you can access them by pressing G through a closed door. But he sells you all the mining stuff. And the same here, when you hit 10, you start earning medals and you can buy bars for the ores you cannot buy at Sifus. Silver, gold and palium. The compass is like the tuner, it's a tracking. Uh, it tracks rare mining nodes. I would guess it is palium then. Maybe also iron in Bahari Bay. A plaque for the wall. A furnace parts wallpaper. Miner's anvil. It looks really cool. And a curio case where you can display, uh, well, your oars, I guess. It looks pretty awesome to me, to be honest. Let's talk to Hassian. Where are you, Hassian? You're standing in your usual spot. He, he sells you recipes for arrows and the bows, of course, uh, the usual, until you hit level 10. You get medals where you can buy ready-made uh, arrows. A hunter's horn, which is a tracker. These are the firework arrows that Seki also sells in his black market cash register. A hunter's plaque for the wall. Cernic run wallpaper. Oh, there are cernics running among the trees here. Hunter's target and hunter's mannequin. I don't know if you can actually practice your, your bow skills on them. This is a, well, it says you can. I like the wallpaper a lot. I'm not so sure about those two items, but I'm gonna have them. Uh, so there. Are you off? Are He's you in charge of bug catching. Yeah, I'll chat with you, okay. I think you have said this to me before. Okay, let's look in your store. The usual? What is this? Oh, this is a tracker. It's like the tuner and the compass and whatnot. The exquisite belt, which is the final thing you unlock for hitting level 10. And the supreme smoke bomb to go with it. After that, you earn medals. You can, you can buy the different bombs and smoke candles and lures and whatnot that you had recipes to craft before, but you can buy them ready-made for tokens. A nifty uh, bug catcher's plaque. A very interesting wallpaper. Butterfly lights. A bug catcher's lure. Looks pretty awesome. And an insectarium. It looks awesome. And then there's Tish. Tish's shop is uh, a bit special. I find her a bit tiresome. I have to be honest. But I'm going to romance her. She sells the glass furnace and the recipe for the fabric loom. Uh, those are the main crafting stations she sells. And also the modification bench, where which she used with mod uh, modification kits to change colors or add items to certain furnishings. But she sells furnishing sets. She sells four recipes and they become increasingly expensive and they demand increasingly rare precious materials. And I'm really annoyed at her because she has sold me this set, which I love, but to craft this bed, you have to have silk. And she doesn't sell the recipe to make silk in my loom until next level, which is frustrating. But anywho, she sells three or four items uh, for each furnishing set and you unlock them as you level up and you pay with gold until you reach level 10. Then she starts, like the others, you earn medals and you can buy items. The first thing is a maker's plaque for the wall, the, uh, wallpaper, Tool chest. This is a decorative item, I would presume. And the furniture maker's drawing board. She doesn't sell uh, ready-made materials because she has them in her cash re register. And you can buy crafted furniture in the shop if you don't want to craft yourself. That was a run-through of all the stores. Not sure if there's anything I've missed. I'm sure there's loads because uh, this game is ginormous. Another general tip is everywhere you go, 
no matter if it's in someone's house or if it's outdoors, look everywhere. You will find treasure chests in uh, unexpected places. If you poke around on the ground and in people's houses, you may find cooking recipes. When you fish, you can get all sorts of things, treasure chests, objects, and not just fish. But uh, this turned out to be a very long video, so I apologize. <laughs> I will put a link here to my playlist where I put all my gameplay. I pretty much record my entire playthrough. The videos are very long, which I apologize for, but consider it uh, the same as watching a VOD, except there will be no dialogue with the chat. <laughs> this is my st style of, of uh, recording, and that's how it is. If you don't like it, you don't need to watch them, but if you do, you're welcome. Every view puts a smile on my face and a like or a comment also makes me happy. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!